D23 took place over the weekend and Disney unveiled so many of their upcoming plans. Letting you know what's uh, next on the sched for Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, their own in-house animation as well as their own in-house live action adaptations. And the biggest trailer, the biggest announcement of the weekend was in fact Snow White. Yes, the live action trailer finally dropped. We got to see our first official official look at Rachel Zegler as the titular Snow White and Gal Gadot being the evil queen and well uh, just some lifeless uninspired shots because I'll be completely honest I watched a bit of the trailer it's kind of nauseating didn't listen to any of the singing all I seen was just a couple of the shots and it's like this is why all modern movies look so uninspired right because when it comes to the direction of the film direction of the camera it's just so unbelievable and everything is just shot so statically there's little dynamic or yeah dynamism to any of the shots it's all just homogenized slop oversaturated poorly lit slop that's the best that i can say about the trailer now not too many portland baristas as opposed to some of the leaked photos we've seen last year a lot more cgi monstrosities that we'll take a look at a couple of the stills of but honestly it doesn't look great really doesn't look great and what we've been hearing from the test screenings it's not being reviewed terribly well but that could also be before the monumental number of reshoots took place but who knows what we're going to be getting march 21st to 2025 because they set the date they they set the warning shot up and we're going to be getting this whether we like it or not snow white live action trailer Rachel Ziegler faces off against Gal Gadot's evil queen and meets the Seven Dwarfs. How wonderful. Live action remake, The Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs has released a trailer. The new Snow White, Rachel Ziegler and the new evil queen Gal Gadot were both on hand at D23 to address the crowd. It's been the honor of a lifetime. Hmm, that's kind of funny. We'll put a pin in that for a second, Ziegler said in taking on the princess role. I think any young person, any little girl, if you get to put on a Disney princess dress uh, for 16 hours a day and don't didn't you want to get paid for every second that you were in that dress anyways and be here and be her for a day let alone six months that that's it that was that just principal photography and we're not factoring in reshoots anyways and i can't wait to oh it's been an amazing experience and i can't wait to share it all with you uh it was a lot of fun uh, to, to to get to do something that is completely different than anything i have ever done before she's delicious she's evil she's magical we got to sing all these different songs it was incredible kiddo said about playing the iconic evil queen then you can see a little picture of her but like i said we'll we'll skim over the trailer here to give you a few visuals but disney previously unveiled the first look image for the show that depicted ziggler as snow white from her signature bob haircut you know surrounded by a group of seven dwarfs yes her signature bob haircut that definitely doesn't look like Lord Farquaad from Shrek. No, definitely doesn't. Don't you dare make those comparisons. Directed by Mark Webb. Really? Man, he's better than that. Anyways, uh, Snow White and the Web, or yes, Seven Dwarfs features reimagining of the original 1937 animated film, blah, 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 discovering that uh, Snow White is still alive. The evil queen visits uh, her cottage and gives her a poisoned apple upon being po yeah, poisoned. Snow White is later awoken by the prince's true love's kiss. But as we knew, back at D3, Two years removed from this, Ziegler and Godot spoke to Variety on the red carpet about the adaptation's differences. When asked about the modern edge of the Snow White remake, Ziegler and Godot both mentioned that Ziegler's Snow White will not be saved by the prince. No, I do believe that Gal Godot said she would not be saved by the prince. But it's funny, right? How the cordial, apparently, Ziegler came across on stage at D23. It's been the honor of a lifetime. Any young person would want to be in that position. Whereas, not that long ago, you had Rachel talking this stuff. I was scared of the original cartoon. I think I watched it once and then I never picked it up again. Like, I'm being so serious. I watched it once and then I went on the ride in Disney World, which was called Snow White Scary Adventures. Right, yeah, I went on it once, I watched the film, like, once, and this is supposed to be, like, a big thing, I guess, but, like, I didn't care. Doesn't sound like something a little kid would like. Was terrified of it. Never revisited Snow White again. So, I watched- Never revisited Snow White again. Oh. For the first time in probably 16, 17 years, when I was doing this film. I 
Right. Yeah. So I revisited it because uh, like the check cashed and I needed to make sure that like, oh, my God, like what oh, what are we going to be doing different? Uh, How is it going to be better for us now? Because like that's more important than some old like 85 year old cartoon because it's not that it's not 1937 anymore. It's weird. It's weird. Like I said, we got the trailer. We got the trailer. We got some visuals, okay? We got some bland-looking CGI, okay? Disney invites you to come and take one final trip down memory lane because we couldn't even spring for, what, real deer or anything like that, okay? You're going to have her in her goofy-ass little dress, and you're going to have Gal Gadot staring down from the rooftops, you know, looking like an evil queen, all that stuff. Staring into the mirror, okay? The only thing that I want, you know, see how she looks you know, in her actual evil looking witch makeup and it's like not bad not bad at all but what are we doing afterwards right how are we gonna have a snow white girl boss her way out of this one because you know th that's still exactly what's gonna be coming right well this post of the trailer has you know 24 million views on it and generally positive looking ratio on it now okay something that's going to be disappearing from uh, x twitter in the near future boo we have over on youtube where i guess all the real toxicity is playing out because you have six million views on the official walt disney studios channel and that that ratio doesn't look very good now does it Four hundred thousand downvotes to sixty-one thousand upvotes. Who's the fairest of them all? Well, you got Gal Gadot looking. I, I guess Gal Gadot-y as the evil queen. Not all that bad. A okay, close up. A close up. Yeah, the makeup's looking good. Okay, it's looking pretty tick on the former Miss Israel. Okay, and then you have yeah the old plain Jane, who's thankfully had the term fairest of all redefined, so that it no longer means the most attractive, because how could you possibly even spin that at all whatsoever? She's nearly half as young as Gal Gadot and somehow looks half as hot. It's kind of crazy to think about, but hey, I thought, you know, given the fact that Disney, at least at time of recording, hasn't turned off all the comments, might as well go through some of them. Because I just want to have this foreshadowed for when, you know, late March, March 21st, 2025 rolls around. What can we anticipate moving forward? No dwarves were hired during the making of our film. Well, yeah, of course, because Peter Dinklage ruined everything there. 90% CGI. Can't even compare to the 87-year-old movie's animation's hand-drawn beauty. Yeah, exactly, because you had woodland creatures. You couldn't even... Take a walk outside and capture any of the majestic natural beauty? No, of course, we're doing a live-action remake the same way you're doing a live-action prequel to The Lion King that's going to be dropping uh, later this year. If you think that Disney's riding high right now off of the back of the $2 billion hits of the year in Deadpool and Wolverine, which had just crossed over this past weekend, and Inside Out 2, how do you think the reputation is going to be heading into all of this nonsense with Mufasa, Moana 2 coming? coming out because that's going to be a back-to-back -back gut punch when it comes to their perception because this is going to be Disney proper, okay? You're not going to have the veil of Pixar, of Marvel, of Hugh Jackman, Ryan Reynolds. You're going to have to deal with somebody who has become wildly unpopular with people in The Rock, somebody who the last time you guys gave the reins to brought you all the success that Jungle Cruise could muster. You're banking on him in 2024. It's a, it's a bold move there. But Bambi, yeah, emerging from the shadows like he's Robert Pattinson's Batman. At this point, the executive should be charged with shareholder abuse. What's the point of doing a live action remake of an animated movie if you're just going to animate half the characters anyway? Remade another animated movie into another animated movie. Yeah, that's the thing, man. That's the thing. Why are you doing this? Is it a rights thing? Okay, if you don't do something with Snow White, it's just going to end up defaulting to the public domain. Because nothing about this seems inspired at all. I don't know how many people thought that we we would, as a society, be so much worse off without the possibility of seeing Gal Gadot as the evil queen. Wasting the potential of Rachel Ziegler as Snow White. We would have been lesser as a society without this inclusion. Or maybe it's Disney's getting desperate. Disney having to cook the books to make Disney Plus look just even middlingly successful by just simply treading water at this point in time. Supposed to turn a profit this year. It's not going to happen. Or also the revelation that their parks, yeah, aren't doing as well. And Universal is beating the brakes off of them like a redheaded stepchild. So we've heard a couple of things from behind the scenes, especially when it comes to Marvel, that they've tried to purge all of the woke activists that are driving down profits and stifling creativity. 
Lucasfilm is doubling down on it, but Disney f for itself, I guess we're just going to have to see because they still have a few arrows left in their 2024 quiver, and we'll have to see what shakes out from there because they might be able to turn around a couple of the entertainment, the cinematic endeavors, but when it comes to the theme parks, um, I mean, they had the blunder that was a Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Now you're looking at turning Rivers of America and Tom Sawyer Island into Cars Frontierland expansion. Yeah, I don't know how well that's going to go over with people. I don't really think that Cars is going to play as well as good old-fashioned Americana, especially in a few years' time once this renovation actually takes place. Because if you're looking forward to the future, you can't think with 2018 sensibilities, and I don't even remember the last time that Cars was even the biggest IP that Pixar had under its belt. Like, Cars 2 was the first blunder like verifiable blunder for Pixar and yeah by the time 26 27 rolls around when some of these changes might start taking place you're very likely to see some sort of a resurrection of good old-fashioned Americana some good down-home sensibilities as well as an earnest and honest return to familial values and even if you're going to try to infuse the cars franchise with those types of messages uh, it's not going to end up working well if you're just taken back some of the most uh, classic iconography at your failing parks. It's a bold move, probably not one that's going to work out well for you, but that's just Disney in a nutshell. One step forward, 23 steps back. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.